that four of the five emergency diesel generators on Unit 5 and 6 were inoperable after the tsunami, and they only had one air-cooled emergency diesel generator on Unit 6 continued to function and supplied electrical power to Unit 6 and later to Unit 5. Now, how would you take... Did you ever see these generators? They're massive. There's radiation everywhere. There's carnage. People don't even know if their families got swept away. And so I find that story hard to believe. Unit 5 has been shut down and is in an outage since January the 3rd, 2001. But apparently they weren't in a cold shutdown. There's conflict and stories about that. And the fuel had been loaded into the reactor. This was uh, August 14, 2010. But let's keep going here. That the, you know, the buildings have water in them. So these buildings are no longer functional. You can't just restart up. Like you hear the media talking about they're going to restart 5 and 6. They couldn't do it. They, couldn't, they can't work in there, see, because it's all radiated water. And TEPCO used radioactive water from reactors 5 and 6 to spray through Fukushima plant over 100 tons a day. This was really highly radioactive water. And it's all through the plants in 5 and 6. So they were never going to get that open again. I don't know what the media reported that they were talking about it. The walls are cracked below the ground at the Fukushima reactor buildings. Right? The buildings are, are destroyed in many different ways, but not just from all this mad water that's in the building. It's radioactive. It's, it's insane. So all the pipes, and even if they do pump the water, everything inside is radioactive. Right? Do you get it? Because radioactive works that way, where you can actually uh, infect metal with radioactive uh, properties, and they become radioactive themselves. But Fukushima reactor number five and six are now in crisis. It was October 24, 2011, and CCM outside was uh, up 100%. So it was in, it, like I'm saying all along here, I'm trying to show you to make you understand that five and six also are in desperate heart attack modes. And they got all that radiation all around them from all those explosions you watched early. They got all that water all through the uh, the buildings. You know, we got the, you can download the video or the pictures yourself from the link on the low, below. Um, I wanted to touch on this one, that if number four collapses, Japan will be evacuated. And there's a better shot of that same picture. That's number four. Now, remember, they showed us that on BBC recently and said, look at it, how nice it is and everything else in there. Uh, just the complete opposite, obviously. But Japan was considered moving their capital away from Tokyo. Think about that one. And I want you to think about uh, CC-137 is code word for plutonium and uranium because that's what nuclear reactors... And they got a shelf life... Uh, uranium is 4.5 billion years, 234 and 235, and uh, 238, which is the byproduct weaponized, uh, what we call yellow cake a lot of the times, but it's actually used for uh, bullets. It's uranium-238. And so that gives off uh, alpha, beta, gammas that are changed and completely different than uranium ever was before because it went through a chain reaction. So here's the forecast. You can see yourself. This is France's Institute for Radiological Protection and Nuclear Safety, March 19, 2011. You can watch that and make up your own mind about the particles, but we got a lot more than that. Fukushima problems are causing concern in the U.S. as the radiation crosses the Pacific. And, of course, the EPA said no comment. Of course, they grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals in 1981 when they hung their shingle out, so what do you expect? Rain out of hot particles from radioactive clouds to continue for another year, see? But actually it goes up into the atmosphere, up into the ionosphere and the stratosphere, and it stays up there for years, and it keeps raining out as it falls back down. But the U.S. government model of the Fukushima cesium-137 particles covering the northern hemisphere is really something else. And so this starts, and there's a date on it for each movement of the Earth, and you can count away at it. It's pretty fascinating. This is about 35, I'm sorry, 40 day projection. And so after 40 days, it stops. But you can be sure the radiation didn't, right? 
So here's some other models with 180 hour forecast because of the jet streams, even at 100 miles an hour, will land on your coastline in 72 hours because that's 2,400 miles per day at 100 miles an hour into the jet streams. And that's why you see these models. They're well-known models. And North America received an incredible amount uh, of fallout. The, this one here was a bit of a controversy also and because it shows uh, this one is a corrector. Right? This one shows 36 hours. It reaches the coastline of Canada and the United States. And so you got a pretty good jet stream that month. So this was a study that used tracers emitted from Fukushima Daiichi's nuclear power plant. Scientists, average person in Seattle, breathed in 10 hot radioactive particles a day during April. June 5th, 2001. Now when Japan released the first of their fire balloons that they sent over with bombs attached to them, on November 3rd, 1944, they were found in Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Idaho, Montana. In other words, that's where the plumes will land to. Top U.S. official raised the possibility of a widespread nuclear fallout March the 16th. I'm sorry, March the 18th? March the 16th, five days after. And once again, you can see the modeling of the plumes coming in the ocean. It's quite hideous. No matter which angle you come at it from, these models, even NOAA, shows that the plumes are um, much faster than anybody was led to believe, much more potent than anybody can, can conceive inside of these, a lot of these studies that were hit away. Fukushima ocean plume hit Canada six months ago. Now, because the rain picks it up and brings it here quicker, the thousands of miles of clouds on the ocean every day can get it over here a lot faster. It can be thrown into the jet stream and then falls out as it's coming here, so you start seeing it showing up. But as the ocean becomes, because it doesn't stop hemorrhaging into the ocean, now, uranium-234 was det detected in Hawaii, Southern California, and Seattle, April 9, 2011. April 15 is showed the April 16th forecast, radioactive clouds stretching from Texas to Canada. Well, Washington Post says it's a total disaster. The ocean is polluted and up to 3,000 miles offshore, kilometers rather, is probably going to be polluted too. And of course that's because the plume is heading over here. And the models are all out there. It's just uh, the media won't show it to you. Boing Boing's not going to show it to you. Deep Sea News is not going to show to you. Uh, banana head out there with 76 million bananas worth of radiation coming out of the ocean is not going to show it to you. But look at this article here, August the 16, 2011. 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter, cubic meter of air, in California. And so California gets a lot of us, is what you got to realize. It loads up in California for some reason. But it goes all over, like the model showed you earlier, it goes all over the place. But California really sucks it up, apparently. And so you can't get away from that. Just walk out and walk through one cubic meter of air, and you're breathing in these hot radioactive particles. These are known as buckyballs. And there's a link below about that and how there's little nuclear engines because they sprayed salt water. And that's what they mean by radioactive sulfur. This extraordinary, unbelievable event on this planet. This is a absolutely completely life-changing event because everybody getting a dose you can't avoid it if you went at your door you breathe air your children are walking to school the police are giving you tickets your governments that are working uh, working you know walking to work or getting into the cars they got to walk through a whole lot of cubic meters of air and so they're breathing all these buckyballs in and their children are breathing it in while they're walking to school and playing in the schoolyards and so everybody Instead of being told and warned about it, they made it into a national secret and they kept the silence. August the 17th, 360 plus atoms of radioactive sulfur per day may have been hailed by the Californians, which is nothing, 360 atoms, when there's a 1,500 in a cubic meter. But whatever, hot particles bombarded the west coast of the U.S. and Canada and contaminated farms and food 
And there's radioactive debris island twice the size of Texas crashed in the Pacific, December 27, 2011. 120 billion becquels of plutonium. 76 trillion becquels of neptunium. First released. Released in the first 100 hours. October the 15, 2001. That finally came out. And so those plumes came across the ocean. No one got a chance to know. Again, because they made it a national secret. They told their own families that day, don't be out. But they never told you. And, of course, nobody knows how many people have killed themselves from Fukushima. I know there was one man got interviewed. And I watched his wife burn up on TV because she was an evacuee and couldn't, couldn't deal with it. And just couldn't deal with it. And a top Japanese official was found hanging, had been the Deputy Minister for Disaster Reconstruction. And who knows what that was all about. He's the guy who gives out the contracts. And we have a peer review study based upon a two-week release from Fukushima only that tells the whole story, but it's only based upon cesium-137. And the reactors run on uranium and plutonium. Uranium-234, 235, and plutonium-239. They have a very, very long half-life. And whatever a half-life is, you should always multiply it by 10. So cesium's 30 years, it's 300 years. Take care, folks. See you tomorrow.